Now that our grid's looking the way we want it, let's get our views placed where we want them in that grid. Rows and columns are numbered starting at zero, the origins in the upper left corner. When you add a child into a grid, you need to tell the grid where to put it. Grid has four attached properties to control this. Column and row position the child in a specific cell, and column span and row span allow a child to occupy multiple cells. Generally, you want to attach row and column properties to every child view in a grid. This can be done either in code or XAML. Remember, the row and column numbering starts at zero. So here, we place this box view in the first column of the second row. Once you have a child view in the proper cell, you can decide if you want to allocate it more space. A convenient way to do this is to give that child multiple cells instead of just one. Column span is the number of cells a child should occupy in the horizontal direction. To span multiple rows, we use row span. Here we're starting at the second row and spanning two rows. The row and column attached properties both default to zero. If you forget to apply those properties, the child will simply end up in the upper left corner. Additionally, row span and column span both default to one, meaning a child will occupy a single cell by default. Grid uses a view's layout options to determine its size and position within its assigned cell. Grid respects both horizontal options and vertical options. By default, these options are set to fill. Start, center, and end options determine the view's position within the cell. Fill means you'd like the view to fill the entire cell in a specific dimension. Remember, both horizontal options and vertical options need to be filled to have the view grow to the entire cell, but that's also the default. Grid adds a bit of space between children. There are two properties for this since grids are generally two-dimensional. Row spacing defines a gap between adjacent rows, and column spacing defines the space between columns. Both values default to 6. Most of the time you'll be adding children to a grid in XAML. It's generally the cleanest way to do things. In cases where you need to generate your UI dynamically in code, Grid has some clever add methods to make it easier to add children and set their row and column values at the same time. The way Grid does this is by redefining the children collection it inherits from its base class. Instead of an I list, Grid uses the I grid list interface, which is where specialized add methods come from. The I grid list add methods are specialized for use just within a grid. It lets you provide values for the four attached properties used by the grid. There are actually quite a few methods in iGridList, but we'll look at the two most common. The first one is intuitive. It lets you add a child and specify the values for the row and column attached properties. Notice the ordering of the parameters follow an XY order, column first, then row. The second method is officially documented as taking the view followed by a left, right, top, and bottom edge index parameters. These four edge values define the rectangle our view will occupy in the grid. If it helps, you can think of it as having three parameters in common with the previous add method, the child view, the column value, which is now the left index, and the row value, which is now the top index. Adding the column span to the column and the row span to the row gives you the right and bottom index parameters, respectively. Let's look at an example of that last add method. Here we pass in edge index values that will put our view in the second row and the first column, spanning one column and two rows. If you don't provide row definition and column definition objects, Grid automatically generates them for you based on the row and column settings of your children. Grid looks at the row setting on all the children and determines the maximum. Since the row numbering starts at zero, Grid adds one to the maximum row value and uses that as the number of rows. Grid does the same calculation for columns. This can be convenient for prototyping, but notice that it has a big limitation. Everything defaults to one star sizing, so the grid will be completely uniform. This is unlikely to be what you want for a production UI.